Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Rishi Achare. I'm a medical lab technologist, a microbiologist, and Android app developer. Okay, so I have two Android apps uh, available on Google Play Store. Uh, one is the lab test reference range, and the other is the bacteria identification made easy. So both of these apps uh, they can be used offline. Uh, and as per the request uh, from my app users uh, to make video on lab diagnosis of COVID-19. I'm here uh, to provide you uh, some information about COVID-19, uh, which is uh, also known as uh, coronavirus disease. Okay, so let me start uh, with the topic uh, coronaviruses. Coronaviruses are a group of related viruses uh, that causes disease in mammals and birds. Uh, they also infect humans and cause respiratory infections, uh, which ranges from mild to the severe forms. Okay, uh, the name coronavirus is derived from Latin word corona uh, meaning crown since a uh, coronavirus uh, has a dense uh, protein spikes uh, which appear as a crown structure and they are coined as uh, coronaviruses so this structure uh, can be seen uh, in the uh, electron microscope okay so they are first uh, discovered in 1930 uh, among the domesticated chickens which were having acute uh, respiratory infections and the human coronaviruses uh, was uh, discovered in uh, 1960s okay so they are enveloped viruses uh, which means that the capsid protein and the nucleic acid uh, which we collectively call is a uh, nucleic acid uh, that nucleic acid is covered by outer coating layer uh, which com comes from the infected cells uh, during the boarding process uh, which is made up of small pieces of cell plasma membrane so uh, these virus uh, they contain envelope okay the genomic size of uh, coronavirus is uh, 26.4 to 31.7 kilo bases they have a single stranded uh, positive sense RNA as a genetic material. Okay, so these are the RNA viruses. The main difference uh, between positive sense and negative sense RNA virus is that uh, positive sense RNA uh, usually consists of a viral mRNA that can be directly translated into proteins. Okay, so where is the negative sense RNA virus uh, consists of a viral RNA that is complementary to the viral mRNA. Okay, so uh, there are, there may be either uh, positive sense RNA virus or a negative sense RNA virus. So this virus is a, a positive sense RNA virus. Okay, so RNA viruses uh, they are the most common causes of a dis uh, emerging disease in human uh, since uh, they are highly susceptible to uh, high mutation than DNA viruses. So these RNA viruses uh, they evolve and cause the new types of disease okay so these the average uh, diameter of the virus particle is uh, around 120 nanometer they belongs to the family uh, coronaviridae okay so the rn the um, covid coronaviruses uh, they can be divided into four uh, division alpha beta gamma and delta alpha and beta coronaviruses uh, they infect mammals uh, while the uh, gamma and delta coronaviruses uh, they infect birds among the four division of coronaviruses uh, alpha beta gamma and delta uh, alpha and beta they infect mammals uh, while gamma and delta they infect uh, birds and among the four division of coronaviruses uh, beta coronaviruses are of clinical importance uh, since uh, they can infect the humans uh, they are also further divided into four lineages a b c and d uh, lineage B contain uh, important species of virus, uh, which is known as uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome related virus, coronavirus, or uh, it is also called as severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus. They are also further uh, divided into two subspecies, uh, two strains. They are uh, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 caused the 202 to 204 outbreak of uh, SARS, while the type 2, uh, which is causing uh, COVID 19 disease. Uh, now, okay, which is ca which is causing a pandemic of COVID-19 is uh, also another strain, and the lineage C uh, contains the MERS COV virus, uh, which caused uh, middle East respiratory syndrome. Uh, this virus uh, is more fatal than the uh, SARS virus. This virus was originated from the uh, Saudi Arabia. Okay. Now COVID-19. Uh, COVID-19 is also known as coronavirus disease. Uh, this is an acute respiratory disease uh, which is caused by novel coronavirus uh, which is later named as SARS-CoV-2 virus. 
At first, China reported a cluster of pneumonia in Wuhan, which is in the Hubei province of China. Uh, they were found to be infected with unidentified microbial agent. Later, after studies, uh, they were found to be infected with the virus, uh, which sequence is similar to the coronavirus, and they were uh, called as a novel coronavirus. The examination of patients' case, case reports uh, the clinical picture comparable to this uh, observed in the SARS outbreak of 2003. So, uh, later, the virus was uh, coined as novel severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus type 2 virus okay uh, SARS type 2 virus uh, this virus is causing worldwide pandemic of COVID-19 affecting uh, more than 210 countries and this was declared pan pandemic by WHO on 11 March 2020 now the origin of COVID-19 The COVID-19 virus was uh, rapidly sequenced uh, by Chinese researcher, where the virus sequence of about 30,000 bases containing 15 genes were identified. A comparative uh, genomic analysis uh, showed that COVID-19 virus uh, belonged to the beta coronavirus and it is very close to SARS coronavirus, uh, which was responsible for an epidemic of acute pneumonia, uh, which appeared in November 2002 in China. Uh, it was uh, known that the bat of the genus Rhinolophus uh, were the reservoir of the SARS coronavirus and the palm cuvette has estimated to serve as an intermediate host between the bat and the first human cases. Regarding the COVID-19 virus, a scientist uh, originally believed that the virus may have developed in bats and uh, later uh, to the pangolins. But uh, many studies uh, did not conclude this theory. Scientists are still trying to understand the origin of COVID-19. However, the genomic comparison suggests that the COVID-19 virus, virus is the result of a recombination uh, between the two differences, different viruses. Now the structure of COVID-19 virus. Each coronavirus is approximately 50 to 200 nanometer in diameter like other coronaviruses it also has four structural proteins known as uh, spike protein s protein envelope protein e protein membrane protein m protein nucleic acid protein n protein the spike protein is the protein uh, responsible for allowing the virus to at attach and to fuse with the membrane of the host shell the N protein uh, it holds the RNA genome together. Yes, E and M protein they together create the viral envelope. Now the genome organization of COVID-19 virus. Uh, as we all know, the virus uh, genome encodes for the protein uh, responsible for its multiplication and also uh, for its structure. The genomic size of COVID-19 virus is around 30,000 base in length. The gene of COVID-19 virus uh, has been reported uh, over 80% identical to the human coronaviruses uh, which were observed before. The structural proteins are encoded by uh, four structural genes including spike, envelope, membrane and nucleocapsid gene. The ORF1 a, uh, which is known as open reading frame 1a the ORF 1a gene uh, encodes for uh, polypeptide 1a uh, protein uh, which also contain 10 non-structural proteins the ORF 1ab is the largest gene which encodes for uh, polypeptide 1ab protein and 15 non-structural proteins uh, these non-structural proteins they form a virus replication transcription complex uh, which is required for virus multiplication within the host cells. Now the mode of transmission of COVID-19. Uh, as per the WHO and CDC, COVID-19 is spread primarily during close contacts. Uh, when a person with COVID-19 cough, sneeze or talk, then they can spread the virus through small droplets. To the healthy people uh, within one to three meter apart uh, this virus uh, can be transmitted indirectly 
people can can be infected when they first toss objects or surface uh, contaminated with the virus and later when they toss their eyes nose or mouth so this is why it is important to stay more than three meter away from the person who is infected and since uh, it can be transmitted during the tossing of hands to eyes nose and mouth hand washing uh, is also significant in stopping the uh, transmission of this virus airborne transmission of covid-19 is not considered but during uh, the procedure like uh, intubation cpr uh, this may cause aerosol production and result in the airborne spread uh, the basic reproduction number ro of covid-19 uh, virus is 2.2 to 2.7 uh, this value uh, varies among the regions. There are evidence that a COVID-19 infection uh, may lead to the intestinal infection and the virus uh, were found to be present in feces, but uh, there has not been any reported cases of a fecal oral transmission. Okay, so the main uh, route of transmission is, is to the close contact. The incubation period of COVID-19 is uh, 5 to 6 days, uh, ranging from 1 to 14 days. Uh, regarding the virus setting, uh, the virus is first identified in a uh, respiratory tract specimen 1 to 2 days uh, before the onset of symptoms. The virus can uh, remain up to 8 days uh, after the onset of symptoms in mild cases. While in the severe cases, the virus peaks in the second week after infection. Uh, during the early stage of infection, uh, close to symptom onset, uh, there is found to be a high viral load uh, which suggests that a virus is easily uh, transmitted during the early stage and since the asymptomatic person can be pcr positive the detection of a viral rna by pcr uh, does not equate with the infectivity and the asymptomatic people they also can shed the virus so that's why it is uh, very difficult to control the spread of this virus and this uh, is the main cause uh, for the COVID-19 pandemic. Now the pathogenesis of COVID-19. COVID-19 can be divided into three phases uh, that corresponds to the clinical stage of the diseases. The first stage is the asymptomatic stage, uh, which is the initial one to two days of infection. After the entry of the virus uh, through the nasal or oral passes, the inhaled virus uh, likely bind to epithelial cells in the nasal cavity and it starts replicating. The virus multiplies and local propagation of the virus occurs, uh, but a limited innate immune response uh, is developed. At this stage, uh, the virus can be detected by nasal swabs. Although the virus burden is low, these individuals are infectious. The RT-PCR test uh, for the viral RNA uh, might be useful to predict the viral load and the subsequent infectivity and clinical course. Oropharyngeal swab or nasopharyngeal swab uh, can be collected for RT-PCR, but nasopharyngeal swab might be more sensitive uh, than the oropharyngeal swab. So it is recommended at least uh, to college collect nasopharyngeal swab. If possible, uh, both swabs should be collected uh, for the early detection of uh, viral RNA. After a few days of the asymptomatic first stage phase, uh, the virus uh, propagates and migrates down the respiratory tract along the conducting airways. Here, a um, more uh, innate immunity response is developed. Uh, innate immunity is the non-specific type of the immune response. The nasal swab and the sputum now can uh, yield a virus. And also the marker of the uh, immune response uh, can be detected. Uh, this is the phase uh, which determines the course of the disease progression. So if the host innate immunity response is good, then the course of the disease progression can be stopped. But if the host immune response is not adequate, uh, as in the immunocompromised condition, the disease can be serious and require uh, aggressive monitoring. Uh, about 80% of the infected peoples uh, may have mild condition, uh, mostly restricted to the upper and uh, conducting airways. 
about 20 percent of the infected uh, person uh, may develop into the stage 3 disease uh, the progression from stage 2 to stage 3 uh, depends on the innate immune response of the host uh, if the host immune response is um, compromised then they will progress to stage 3 disease and develop pulmonary infiltrates and some of these uh, may develop a very severe disease uh, during this phase the virus now reaches the gas exchange unit of the lungs uh, known as alveoli and infect the alveolar type 2 cells. The virus accesses the host cell uh, via the AC2 receptor uh, which is present on the surface of the type 2 pneumocytes. The virus uh, uses the spike glycoprotein to connect to the AC2 receptor and enters the host cell. The virus uh, propagates within the type 2 cells uh, where a large number of uh, viral particles are released and the cell undergo apoptosis and die. A pathological uh, result of COVID-19 is a diffuse alveolar damage with a fibrin rich a hyaline membrane and a few multinucleated giant cells. Recovery uh, will now uh, require a vigorous uh, innate and acquired immune response and the uh, generation of the epithelial cells. Uh, in stage 3, uh, due to the dysfunction within the respiratory center, the condition uh, may further progress to acute uh, respiratory distress syndrome, uh, which, uh, which may lead to hypoxia. The viremia can be observed in very severe form, where uh, it might cause uh, acute myocardial in, uh, injury and further damages the uh, cardiovascular system. A high incidence of a thrombosis and venous thromboembolism uh, have been found in ICU patients and may be uh, related to the poor prognosis. A blood vessel dysfunction and a clot formation uh, which uh, we can detect by the uh, D-dimer test uh, is uh, thought to play a significant uh, role in the mortality. Acute a kidney injury is a common complication and, and cause of death uh, that is more uh, significant uh, in the patient uh, with already compromised uh, kidney function. Now the immunopathology of COVID-19. The infection can activate innate and adaptive immune response. Uncontrolled inflammatory innate response and the impure adaptive immune response may lead to tissue damage locally and systemically. In severe patients, lymphopenia is a common feature with a reduced number of CD4 T cells, CD8 T cells, B cells and natural killer cells. Many patients with severe COVID-19 showed elevated serum levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines uh, including interleukin 6, interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 2, interleukin 8, interleukin 17, a tumor necrosis factor, etc. Uh, C-reactive protein and D-dimers, uh, they are found to be abnormally high. High level of pro-inflammatory cytokines uh, may lead to shock and tissue damage in heart, liver and kidney as well as the respiratory failure or multiple organ failure. They also mediate extensive pulmonary pathology leading to massive infiltration of neutrophils, macrophages, uh, causing diffuse alveolar damage with the formation of hyaline membrane and diffuse thickening of alveolar wall. The elevated level of interleukin-6 uh, were found to be a stable indicator of poor outcome uh, for the patient with a severe COVID-19. Now the symptoms of COVID-19. And the person infected with COVID-19 uh, can be symptomatic or asymptomatic uh, without any symptom. Uh, the symptomatic person uh, may develop of flu-like symptoms such as fever, cough, fatigue, and shortness of breath. Uh, fever may be developed uh, later in the disease. The emergency symptoms uh, that may include are difficulty breathing, persistent uh, chest pain or pressure, confusion, difficulty in walking, bluish fair uh, face or lips. Uh, this should be treated as early as possible. Uh, gastrointestinal symptoms uh, such as nausea, vomiting and diarrhea have been reported uh, in some cases. Uh, some of the people uh, they reported a decreased sense of smell and disturbance uh, in taste. Uh, pink eye uh, is also considered as uh, one of the features uh, according to the new study. Okay, now a viral replication. Uh, COVID-19 virus uh, is an enveloped positive sense RNA virus uh, with nucleocapsid. 
the cell target uh, of this virus is the type 2 alveolar cell so this is the cell okay and this is the virus particle at first on uh, the spike protein so this is the spike protein the spike protein uh, present in the virus envelope and bind to the cellular receptor uh, this is the receptor okay this is the SCE2 receptor uh, at first on uh, the spike protein are present in the virus uh, envelope binds to the cellular receptor which is SCE2 receptor after receptor binding and uh, there is a conformation of change in the S protein uh, which facilitates the viral envelope uh, fusion with the host cell membrane okay so there is an important role of S protein uh, after membrane fusion okay after membrane fusion uh, uncoating of the virus particle occurs uh, viral RNA is released inside the host cytoplasm this is the viral RNA okay the genomic RNA is then uh, translated to viral replicates polyproteins uh, polyproteins 1A and 1AV by the help of uh, host uh, ribosome so this protein uh, gets proteolized uh, into a bunch of smaller proteins and collectively these proteins uh, in general are involved in a replication they form a replication transcription complex uh, and are responsible for the replication of genomic RNA now uh, when the genomic RNA uh, which is a positive sense is replicated it gives a genomic RNA in the antisense form so uh, that will be the negative sense RNA so the RNA is a minus strand okay uh, two things happen uh, with the antisense RNA that is produced one uh, it can be replicated into positive sense RNA uh, which is the similar to the original virus uh, during uncoating or this virus RNA uh, can be transcribed into different EM RNAs by a method uh, known as uh, discontinuous uh, transcription so these EM RNA are known as a subgenomic EM RNA okay these mRNA are then uh, translated into different uh, proteins uh, different proteins like uh, nucleocapsid spike uh, membrane and envelope protein the translation of uh, spike protein envelope uh, protein and membrane protein takes place at uh, endoplasmic reticulum membrane while the nucleocapsid protein is uh, translated to in the uh, cytoplasm okay this viral protein altogether form the new viron okay finally the viron containing vesicles are fused with the plasma membrane of the cell uh, to release the virus and the virus again attacks the new cell and the cell is uh, repeated so this is the a viral replication process okay now the laboratory diagnosis of COVID-19 the lab diagnosis of COVID-19 uh, can be achieved by two methods one is the identification of COVID-19 virus uh, in a specimen and that detects the presence of virus itself uh, which can be acid by either RT-PCR or by isothermal nucleic acid amplification test uh, virus culture is not recommended for the laboratory purpose and another is the uh, detection of antibodies are produced in response to the infection okay uh, the real-time uh, reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction also known as RRT PCR is the gold standard test for the diagnosis of COVID-19 RT PCR can be done on the clinical specimen from nasopharyngeal swab oropharyngeal swab sputum brachial alveolar lavage tracheal aspirate okay so in case of symptomatic patient uh, recommended sample are from the lower respiratory tract uh, including sputum a bronchial alveolar lavage tracheal aspirate okay when possible if the sample collection is not possible from the lower respiratory tract then the sample can be collected from the upper respiratory tract okay in general uh, the collection of combined nasopharyngeal swab and oropharyngeal swab is uh, recommended so this is the portion uh, of nasopharynx where the sample can be collected and this is the portion of oropharynx where the samples are collected from the swab 
During collection, only Dacron or polyester flock swabs uh, should be used. If uh, sampling of asymptomatic uh, contacts uh, are to be done, then the upper respiratory, respiratory samples uh, can be collected. Okay. The respiratory samples uh, should be kept uh, refrigerated uh, 4 to 8 degrees Celsius and sent to the laboratory where they should be processed within 24 to 72 hours of collection. If sample uh, cannot be sent uh, within the period, freezing at minus 70 degrees Celsius is uh, recommended okay, until the samples are shipped. The virus uh, can be detected in other samples like, like in stool and blur, but uh, these samples are not recommended for the diagnosis. Sample uh, should be collected by trained personnel and should be should use uh, personal protective equipment. Uh, okay. Now uh, let us discuss about the RT-PCR. Okay, RT-PCR is also known as a reverse transcription polymer chain reaction. Uh, it is a laboratory technique uh, which combines two steps. Step one is uh, reverse transcription of uh, RNA into DNA. And step two is the amplification of specific DNA targets uh, using polymer chain reaction. If RT-PCR is done by monitoring the amplification reaction uh, using fluorescence, uh, then the technique is called as real-time RT-PCR. RT-PCR uh, should not be called as real-time PCR. Uh, for real-time PCR, uh, it is called as qPCR. The PCR techniques uh, detects the specific uh, ge genetic material present in the virus. Uh, different companies, uh, they use a different segment of genes for the identification of virus. Uh, since the coronavirus is a RNA virus, uh, it needs to be converted to DNA. So only DNA uh, is only a DNA can be copied or amplified. So a detection of uh, COVID-19 virus, uh, it also requires the RT-PCR technique. Okay. At the moment, uh, the majority of the uh, COVID-19 cases are reported as per the RT-PCR test uh, result. RT-PCR detects the virus nucleic acid, which can be detected detected if the person is actively infected. Okay, so RT-PCR uh, gives a good indicator of uh, who is infected, uh, so that they can be isolated and the close contacts uh, that can be traced and isolated uh, to break the chain of transmission of virus. The PCR uh, has a, a sensitivity of uh, around 70%. Uh, the PCR test uh, required. Uh, a septic laboratory condition and a skilled lab uh, personnel. Okay, uh, different countries uh, approach the different uh, detection of a different genes portion of the virus nucleic acid uh, for the nucleic acid identification. Okay, uh, the US uh, CDC targets uh, N gene, the China CDC targets uh, ORF, uh, AV gene, and N gene. The German uh, chariot company they uh, produce the kit uh, which targets RDRP gene, E gene, and N gene. Similarly, the Hong Kong University they uses uh, ORF1B non structural protein uh, and N gene. Okay. And similarly, uh, the National Institute of Infectious Disease Japan and National Institute of Health Thailand uh, they, they use uh, N gene target uh, for the identification. The first step uh, before performing the PCR test is the specimen collection. Uh, for COVID-19 diagnosis, the specimen should be collected from the lower respiratory tract uh, if possible. Otherwise, nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal swabs uh, can be collected by the help of dacronal polyester flock swabs. The specimen uh, should be placed in viral transport medium uh, before transportation to the laboratory. The samples should be processed uh, as early as possible. The second step uh, is the nucleic acid extraction. RNA is extracted from the specimens that can be done by using uh, manual as well as the automatic method. RNA is uh, very difficult to isolate. RNAs uh, that degrade RNA molecule are present abundant in the environment. Uh, including on hands and on the surface and it is difficult to destroy RNAs completely. So RNA isolation uh, requires a cautious handling of the sample and a good aseptic techniques. It is important to use only RNAs free solution during extraction as well as RNAs free pipettes, tips and glasswares. The extraction is done 
in a biosafety level 3 laboratory uh, within class 2 uh, safety cabinet. The third step is the amplification uh, which is done in the thermocycler. And the last step is the detection of uh, virus nucleic acid which can be achieved by observing the CT values uh, from the graph. Now the RT-PCR technique, uh, okay. uh, since PCR requires DNA, uh, we need to use reverse transcriptase enzyme to create a complementary DNA or cDNA strand uh, from the extracted RNA. Okay. So usually uh, the one step uh, real-time RT-PCR is done where the cDNA synthesized by the reverse transcriptase uh, is done in the same tube as the PCR reaction. Okay. So the PCR is done in a thermocycler uh, device. Before PCR, uh, we need to know about some of the requirements. First one is the uh, purified RNA, uh, which we extract for the detection. Second is the reverse transcriptase enzyme, which is necessary to convert our extracted RNA to uh, complementary DNA for the PCR amplification. Third one is the tagged DNA polymerase, uh, which synthesizes the nucleotide to the growing DNA strand. The tagged DNA polymerase uh, used in the real-time PCR, uh, they has the five prime to three prime uh, exonuclease activity. Uh, which uh, removes the probes by extending the DNA. Okay. Fourth one is the DNTPS, uh, known as a deoxyribonucleotide triphosphate. The DNTPS uh, they are required to expand the growing DNA strand uh, with the help of tag polymerase. Fifth uh, important are the primers. Uh, they are a short nucleic acid sequence, uh, usually 18 to 23 base long, uh, that provide the starting point for the DNA synthesis. So there are uh, also uh, two types of primer, forward and reverse primer. Okay, the forward primer uh, attaches to the start codon of the template DNA, while the reverse primer attaches to the stop codon of the complementary strand. Okay, and the uh, very important component, uh, last component, they are the probes. Uh, the probes are the sort sort a single stranded sequence is specific, uh, which are fluorescent level. The probe is labeled with the fluorescent Die uh, called is a reporter molecule uh, situated at the five prime end. Okay. The other three prime end uh, is the quencher die, uh, which is in close proximity to the reporter die and quenches the fluorescence of the reporter die. As you can see in the slide over here, uh, these are the CDC primers and probes. Okay. Uh, these are the CDC primers and probes uh, for the detection of COVID-19 virus by RT-PCR. Uh, CDC uses uh, four genes a uh, sequence okay selected from the regions of the virus uh, nucleocapsid genes okay they are n1 n2 n3 genes while the additional uh, rnsp gene is added to verify the correct specimen collection okay so if the specimen collection is appropriate then these genes are detected in the sample okay In the probes here, uh, as you can see, at the five prime end, uh, which is linked with the reporter molecule called uh, six carboxyfluorescein, and at the three prime end over here, black hole quencher molecule uh, is attached. The probes uh, contain sequence with a uh, reporter molecule and black quencher. Okay, black hole quencher. Uh, due to the presence of quencher, the reporter molecule cannot emit fluorescence. But when reporter molecule is uh, separated, okay, when reporter molecule is separated from the quencher, then it in can uh, it can uh, fluorescence, okay. Uh, this is the essential part of the PCR test. Uh, we will discuss uh, about the PCR steps uh, in the next slide, okay. RT-PCR uh, combines uh, reverse transcription of uh, RNA into complementary DNA and amplification of specific DNA targets uh, using the PCR. Okay, the RT-PCR can be one step or two step. Uh, usually, uh, one step PCR is done. RT-PCR is done. The difference uh, between the two approaches lies in the number of tips used when performing the procedure. The two step uh, requires the reverse transcription and PCR amplification uh, to be performed in uh, two separate tips. While in uh, one step PCR uh, reverse transcript transcriptase reaction and PCR amplification is uh, done in the same tube. Okay, 
So at first, uh, the RNA is extracted from the respiratory tract specimen, and then the RNA is purified. Then the RNA is uh, reverse transcri transcribed to cDNA. So uh, this is the uh, this is done once. Okay. So this is uh, to be done uh, done uh, for a single time, and then the the cDNA is amplified uh, by PCR, uh, which is achieved uh, through the three steps: uh, denaturation, annealing, and extension. Okay. The first stage the is step is the denaturation. Uh, denaturation is done at 95 degrees Celsius. Okay. Uh, it is done at 95 degrees Celsius. Which uh, separates the both strand, okay? So this is the denaturation steps. So at 95 degrees Celsius, the both DNA strands are they separate, okay? And second step uh, is the annealing, annealing step. The temperature uh, during this step, the temperature is uh, lowered at lowered to around uh, 58 degrees Celsius, okay? So during this uh, the primers okay so these are the primers forward and reverse primer okay uh, during this the primers and the probes so this is the probe uh, which uh, which contain the reporter dye here and the black hole quencher so these probes and the primers okay uh, these binds to the dna so this is the Annealing step. Okay, so uh, these are the th uh, this is the um, uh, forward primer, and uh, this is the reverse primer, and this is the probe. Okay, so during this step, uh, these components uh, they bind to the DNA. This is the uh, this is the second step, and third step uh, is the extension. Okay, so uh, during this step. The tagged DNA polymerase expands the DNA strand and also uh, removes the probe. So this probe is uh, removed by uh, five prime to uh, three prime uh, exonuclease activity. Okay. So the cleavage of probe uh, is an essential uh, part of the reaction uh, because it separates the reporter dye from the quencher dye. So when the light uh, excites the reporter dye, the reporter dye can now fluorescence. Uh, since the quencher dye, uh, which is too far from the reporter dye, is not there to block uh, its emission. Okay. So, in the next uh, PCR step, uh, twice the number of template DNA molecules are uh, available for the reaction. Again, the probe molecules annuls to the template along with the primers. As the reaction proceeds, uh, the reported dyes are liberated into the solution. Okay. So, after each cycle, the intensity of the fluorescence is measured. And the data from all the cycles are used to construct an uh, amplification chart. Okay. Okay. Uh, the fluorescence signal is uh, measured at the end of uh, its amplification. Uh, the fluorescence emitted during the PCR cycle uh, determines the result of the PCR test. Okay. The fluorescence signal should uh, should exceed the uh, defined background threshold. Uh, the result of the PCR uh, is based on the CT values. Okay, uh, CT values uh, is known as a cycle threshold. Uh, cycle threshold, or it is also known as a crossing point value. The CT value uh, of a reaction is uh, defined as the cycle number when the fluorescence of the PCR product uh, can be detected above the background signal. So, in order to uh, draw a CT value, uh, it is necessary to draw a horizontal line. Okay, uh, horizontal line on the amplification plot the placement of this line is, is often uh, determined by the uh, qpcr software uh, however uh, we the users uh, they also can uh, manually place this uh, line the ct value uh, is associated uh, with the amount of pcr product in the reaction the lower the ct value uh, the more pcr product that is uh, present uh, because it takes a few pcr cycles for that product to be detected uh, over the background signal Okay, the CT value uh, less than 30 are considered strong positive reactions. The CT value are less uh, 30 to 37 are positive reaction, uh, indicative of a moderate amount of target nucleic acid. Okay, the CT value uh, 30, 38 to 40 are a uh, weak reaction. Uh, they are indicative of a minimal amount of, of 
uh, target nucleic acid okay so which uh, uh, which could represent an infection infective stage or uh, it is also uh, due to the environmental contamination okay the control uh, this should be run uh, along with the test okay the negative control uh, the ct value is not detected in case of positive control the ct value should be less than uh, 38 and all clinical sample uh, should it positive uh, results for R rp target uh, should be uh, less than uh, 40 okay ct value should be less than 40 for rp target There are two approaches for the diagnosis of COVID-19. Uh, one is the identification of COVID-19 virus in a specimen that detects the presence of virus itself, uh, which can be achieved by using RT-PCR. Another approach uh, is the detection of antibodies uh, produced in the response to the infection. Okay, so there are two approaches. One is the detection of virus itself. Another is the detection of uh, antibodies. Okay, antibody testing uh, measures the body immune response uh, to the infection and can also provide a prior infection which may be a result or is uh, still resolving okay so the uh, antibody testing uh, can be achieved by using a rapid diagnostic test kit okay that is also known as rdds there are two types of antibodies igg and igm antibodies uh, that are produced uh, during the infection uh, as the first line of defense against the against the infection human igm antibodies is generated okay and the level of igm antibodies uh, usually rises uh, within two weeks and then drops okay the second antibody uh, that is igg antibody uh, which is more protective than igm antibodies uh, it is developed uh, within four weeks of infection and uh, can remain in a circulation for a long time okay so the rapid uh, diagnostic test rdds uh, detects the presence of igg and igm antibodies in the circulation so which indicate the uh, acute infection or as well as the fast infection okay but the rt pcr test uh, that detects only the active infection okay so rdt or de detection of antibodies is also of a vital importance okay so there are few other advantages like so it can be uh, um, it can be done easily it is less expensive uh, it can be performed anywhere uh, without the requirement of skilled manpower okay and the result can be obtained uh, within 20 minutes after the start of the test procedure so there are few these are the few um, advantages of rdt over rt pcr okay so and these are the mainly two two methods uh, for the diagnosis of covid 19.